Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about SpaceX versus Boeing. So let's dive right into it. Well, first we have to look at Boeing because A, it's elderly. And uh, you have to understand, this is American multinational corporation, AKA they started from America and at this point in time, they have like basically controlled the whole planet. So they're big. Now, another aspect, which is the more important one is they are old, their roots go way back in time, fundamentally, they started in 1916 that is 104 years old let that sink in this puppy is 100 years old there are very few things that are that old in terms of companies now uh, in terms of their capability basically what they have done they have a very big standing so to say like their name carries serious amount of weight in aviation and in space both of them like there are many uh, milestones that have been only achieved by boeing basically before boeing nobody else knew how to do that there are like a lot of them like a lot of them so their name carries significant weight to give you a context of that saturn 5 stage 1 boeing baby so they are serious they are like serious business their name carries some serious amount of weight and uh, they are also almost like 50 percent of ula united launch alliances basically a new corporation that was made to just to streamline the process and make uh, interaction with nasa more efficient and boeing is so huge they have a sub corporation quote unquote inside them which is boeing defense space and security now these puppies are only responsible for dealing with anything that goes to space so they are dealing with if they want to launch a spy satellite boeing like got your back if you want to launch a payload for uh, you know international space station they got your back so there is a whole division inside boeing that is like you know bigger than almost most uh, countries uh, space uh, basically uh, Yes, most countries space agency, fundamentally speaking. So they are big, they are old, they are experienced and their name carries some serious weight. Now compare that, like contrast that with SpaceX. So this puppy started in May 6, uh, 2002. So fundamentally, this is barely an adult, aka 18 plus. So what's the idea behind the idea is it's a brainchild of elon musk now you have to understand that the most important resource in this planet is human brain now elon musk is a unique kind of individual some may even say cult like personality what does that mean that simply means certain type of people are drawn to him now pr department is very important in this and spacex is like bro let me teach you how pr works basically before their uh, spacex nobody even knew how to have, have a space company that like people are excited about so fundamentally that means there is a lot of youth drawn to this and because they have such a large pool they can filter out best of the best of the best so fundamentally even though their company could have only let's say 50,000 individuals working for them uh, that 50,000 would have what we call youth and passion now fundamentally that's a very important thing because at certain point uh, in everyone's age no matter how good you are no matter how experienced you are you will reach a point where your brain is no longer adapting your brain is kind of like you know quote unquote falling into patterns where it's like dude this works let, don't tamper with it like you know if it works to uh, you know don't do it like if it ain't broke don't fix it that kind of approach happens that's human brain that's not uh, like you know oh like you know the, the, you're growing old that's part of human life that's it will happen inevitably now you take space sex and you directly compare it to nasa you don't even have to ask like where do you work you will look at them and like yep you work in spacex yep you work in nasa and that is fundamentally very critical like they have kind of raw power that youth and passion is raw and it's powerful and you can easily see its uh, effect in the milestone channel now you cannot compare two companies unless they are competing in exact same thing which happened uh, basically both of them won nasa's contract of commercial crew program now nasa learned the hard way that uh, they are really bad with money like they can do things but they are really really bad with money and not to mention time also and uh, because of failure of space shuttle program they are like yep we cannot be trusted with this now they started the simple program it's like we're not gonna tamper with you you we're gonna give you a contract you're gonna figure out the, how the heck you're gonna fund that puppy up like we're gonna take care of 50 percent of it and all you have to do is uh, complete our test request basically we're gonna give you a test and you have to pass that nothing else like build however you want to build a uh, freaking uh, system with only one parachute i don't care like it has to have certain requirements and if you can pass that requirements go yolo i don't care about it like it is completely different from nasa's old approach where they're like no why are you utilizing this bolt this bolt is made out of aluminum it has to be made out of stainless steel like you know uh, completely hands-off approaches like make whatever you want to make in the budget that you have asked for and make sure that it qualifies our uh, like standard that's it like nothing else nasa is only gonna take care of the final piece now so far uh, both these companies both these giant they created two systems basically spacex crew dragon and boeing starliner now spacex have already completed it be mindful 
it, it's not longer in a phase where it's a tester or they are completing you know it's done game over nasa's logo is directly on the rocket at this point in time the end game over crew one was very important for that reason alone it was no longer a prototype it was no longer a test it is a final product basically first batch like this was like a quote-unquote iphone moment so to say for space industry so they went from barely carrying two people to four people and they can carry even more but like you know there's uh four this time they no longer want to risk seven astronauts in one go so point is spacex achieved it even though this company is only 18 years old they have beat a company that is 100 years old so milestone like head to head both started at the same time both had clear cut goals like exactly and heck boeing actually asked for more money and they got more money from uh, nasa and simply the fact that boeing is much more experienced and like you know their experience goes as back as like actually boeing is older than nasa so you can understand that so money was not an issue for boeing now let's understand nasa's point of view what happened here now nasa learned the hard way that no matter what happens monopoly is really bad for example when uh, soviet union uh, dissolved they had the space program that space program faltered to russia russia was providing uh, basically cargo uh, crew prop option for going to iss once the space shuttle was grounded the ticket prices of basically uh, crew system started to go up slowly brick by brick they did not directly went big up because if it was too big of a shock they might say hey just resurrect the space shuttle or resurrect something else. so they waited a few years before it everything rots so they cannot do re quote unquote resurrect something and they're like start to increase the price tick 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 so just to make sure that does not happen with any uh you know ever again so to say so they are going with a multi-company option that's absolute it's like they know for a fact that you have to make sure uh, you have multiple options d1 uh, like from administration level alone it's like it does not matter one is uh, like you know let's say one x cost and another is five x at the cost you must have two vehicles bare minimum so no single point of failure should ever occur exactly like space shuttle however boeing given the legendary status given the experience given the yolo bank account nasa suffered what we classify as loss of confidence like this is from nasa's mouth itself it's not like somebody else saying it it's nasa is themselves is like dude how the it's like almost like uh, nasa got quote unquote scam now again it's, that's a bit of a rough word but you get the point it's like nasa was like dude you should know how to make a freaking uh, protocol algorithm for your uh, capsule it should know how the heck clocks work like you have been building planes you have been building things before we had quartz movements before we had advanced computers before we had atomic systems how the heck you messed this part up it's like their ca capsule basically this capsule is uh, so messed up practically speaking nasa is like bro you have to change at least 80 stuff in it at least and not to mention after do after that do all the testing and hopefully nothing will break any uh, any further so fundamentally they took more time they took more money and they still not deliver it's like if it was like okay it's just more expensive uh you know crew dragon eh, not too much of a big deal but it's like dude you took more money you took more time and you still have not delivered like at this point in time they would be really really lucky to reach that crew one status where there is no longer demonstration where there is no prototyping and all that like this is the final product best case scenario is 2022 and that's just like really really best case scenario so fundamentally nasa like kind of took a hit but under no circumstances they ever gonna go back to space shuttle so they want to know make sure that spacex cannot do the same thing that uh, russia did they're like no 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 no. We, we will make sure that there is competitor to you no matter what happens but it was like a kind of hard look and uh, spacex was like going with through microscope uh, everything uh, what spacex was doing however they kind of ignored with boeing and and after the failure of the recent launch system they're like nope at this point in time we're gonna like double triple quadruple check everything you are doing because that is the cost of loss of uh, basically confidence everything will be scrutinized at this point in time because they kind of that name that heavy name became the heavy burden so to say so what we can expect in the future well one thing you have to understand whether you like elon musk or not and whether you like his personality or not if there was ever an individual that personified the fact i have a goal and i'm gonna do it he's elon musk fundamentally like that's the one aspect of him that i thoroughly respect it's like i have to go to mars i went to nasa nasa rejected me i went to soviet uh soviet i'm saying i went to russia they rejected me i said yes to all of them i'm gonna make my own company and actually did actually did and beat all of them like all of these giants that have been running for like freaking 50 years all of them in their own game so fundamentally i respect that fact like he has absolute goal now absolute goal are amazing because they can move a company at ludicrous speed which nasa did had experience when they were trying to go to the moon think of this when nasa was created and they managed to put a man on the moon in eight years that's speed that's the benefit of having a goal and spacex have absolute goal it's like from day one nasa mars the end like 
go to mars the end there is nothing else so that is very very crucial so to say if you want if everybody working in your company knows the end game your company is going to go at light speed so that's a awesome thing another aspect is uh they have future plans and they are also planning for money so they are go- going in a different direction so they are rather than like just hey we are a service provider where we like if nasa calls us up we're going to offer a rocket if a department of defense calls us up we're going to give them a rocket no SpaceX is like, no, if we stay in that kind of thing, we will have money. We will have enough commercial system at this point in time that even if NASA is like completely backs off, we're not going to go bankrupt, but we will no longer grow. So they figured out they have a rocket. Why not make a satellite internet service, Starlink? Now, Starlink, even if uh, only successful to few percent, it will have more than enough money to fund mass mission directly. So they no longer even have to have that uh, uh, fall point of like, hey, NASA has to pay for us. No, no. Like they are, because again, NASA is susceptible to uh, public opinion because imagine it this way, let's say public opinion is like space is a waste of time. And uh, everybody is like, every senator is like, okay, we will cut the cost. NASA have serious amount of cost cutting done. And what after that? Uh, again, it won't be NASA's fault. It's like, NASA, like, bro, we don't have money to give you. So to make sure if they are immune to that also, they are building their stash uh, link system and it's working. Now compare that to Boeing. Uh, fundamentally, Boeing is kind of uh, reached a point where there is no Boeing head. There is like, if I say SpaceX, you know an individual. When I say Boeing, you do not know that individual. You do not know the CEO because again, the CEO keep changing over time and time. So there is no uh, quote unquote passion behind it. There is no goal behind it. They have to change up their game. They have to be much more competitive. And there is a financial reason for that simply because the pandemic kind of destroyed airlines business. Their stock went down. And before this happened, they really had a really messed up aircraft launch. And because of the Boeing name, everybody bought it. And then they're like, oh damn, they did not even need software but fixing on that. So that was really, really bad. Having two new aeroplanes going boom, and that's all because you had messed up a core software aspect. It's like, how the heck you messed that up? Like, and if you messed that up, it's like, dude, you should have trained the uh, pilot. That should have been step one. If you're going to this new plane, make sure your pilots are retrained. They're like cost cutting measures. I'm like, really? Enjoy your cost cutting. You lost uh, like freaking 18% in stock value or something like that. So like really, really stupid. So what does that mean? That fundamentally means there are two big divisions, space division and uh, basically commercial uh, aircraft division. Aircraft division is no longer printing money as it used to. So they have to pump up the game on the space division. Otherwise, fundamentally, they are not in a good position and they have to be far more adaptable. This is one severe side effect of once a company becomes too huge. And apparently this is kind of nature's mechanism to make sure that we never have a, you know, one super giant company that destroys everything else is because like once you become big enough, you will never learn, you will never adopt and you will go bankrupt because of that. Like for example, Sony's uh, mobile division, like Sony's mobile division, a company that makes camera sensor for every mobile phone, including iPhone, some how can not make a freaking smartphone like because they're again big company they're like we want to approach this this that and like by the time they actually settled on like okay we have to do this we have to utilize uh, our alpha divisions uh, system yeah good luck with that so that happens but they have to like boeing have to fix themselves and they have to be like far more adaptable it's like no they cannot be in a position where like every other space organization is like for example uh now isro looks at uh, spacex and it's like okay we have to do reusable rocket because A is fundamentally cheaper and better. Okay. Uh, this decision, once I have started in people's mind, it will take barely four to f- uh, five years before it actually becomes a reality and people are like, okay, let's start a new project. By that time, SpaceX would be like, yeah, we have already completed a starship. So that uh, inflexibility is detriment. So Boeing has to become much more flexible. They have to be like, okay, quick response, quick in- iterations. They have to become far more flexible. If they do not, the end. And another aspect is you never want a monopoly. No matter how much you love SpaceX, you only love Elon Musk at this point in time. Because the moment Elon Musk disappears and some another individual takes his place, uh, there is a very serious risk. Like just gonna increase the price a little bit, just a little bit, a little bit more. And maybe the next individual is not interested in mass. What the hell after that? It's like, yeah, I, all the money, just wire it in my bank account. Okay, uh, that happens. Like all co- corporation happen, uh, this thing happens once the core individual leaves or retires or dies or something like that happens. This happens. So fundamentally, you never want a monopoly because the moment monopoly happens, it's a bad news for everyone. So this was my presentation on SpaceX versus Boeing. I hope you liked it. Learn from it. In that case, please hit the like button. Share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike. Press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe. Press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.